found it. I found it. I found it. The perfect case to show you how we tip teeth with clear liners. This is what we're gonna see today in this clear tip video. If you like our videos and you're not subscribed to the channel yet, it's time to do it now. Just click on the little subscribe here, click on the bell and you will be notified every time we have a new video on our channel. My name is Stefan Reinhardt. I'm the director of the education program for the Clear Institute where dentists make the move. And today we're going to talk about tipping. Now there's three orders of tooth movement. You have the first order, the second order, and you guessed it, the third order. Now the way I remember this is the way my friend Jerry Sampson showed it to me. Okay, take your hands. First order deals with horizontal movement. First order, do it. Come on, nobody's looking at you. Second order is tipping. Tipping is meso distal movement. Do it like, like wipers, you know, you can do it. Come on, do it. And the third order deals with torque. Torque, buckle, lingual, buckle, lingual. Or as my friend Jerry would do, third order movement. <laughs> if you want to know more about how to move teeth with clear aligners, we have a very good course on our online learning platform the biology of tooth movement, biomechanics of tooth movement with clear aligners. You have all the information in the comments below. Now, tipping teeth means we want to move them, we said, mesodistally. So this case is perfect. It's a perfect example. The teeth are, the, the initial position of the teeth are perfect. To really apply the force, a natural force, to bring these teeth together and close the space. And it will help you understand the mechanics of tooth movement, how we apply the force, where we should apply the force. Now, looking at this, just think about what if the teeth were all in soft wax and you just would want to take your, your teeth or your thumb to move the teeth. Where would you apply the force? Think like plastic. Think like an aligner. Now you're an aligner. You're covering these teeth and you want to make them move like this. How would you apply the force? Where should you? I mean, let's face it. The, 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 the facial surface of these incisor is, is flat. It's smooth. If I just put a piece of plastic over this, thinking it's going to push them and close the space, I'm dreaming. Of course it will move, but we will not control the movement. It's like, it's like having a car at the top of a hill and you're just pushing the car down. It will go down. But if there's nobody behind the wheel, we don't know where it's gonna end up. Having somebody behind the wheel would be the equivalent of having, having what? On our teeth, having, I heard it, attachments. Yes, we need attachments. Now, what type of attachment? Think about it, what type of force? You need a horizontal force. To move teeth like this, you would, you would push like this, you would push them, you would push with a horizontal force. One thing that can help you decide what type of attachments are, the orientation of the attachments, is that usually attachment will be perpendicular to the force we want to apply. So if I want to apply a force like this, I'm going to have an attachment like this. If I want to apply a force like this, I'm going to have an attachment like this. Perpendicular. 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 Lar, 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 lar. Ah, a positive direction. So let's take a closer look at this case here. Again, we have this space we want to close and the angulation of the teeth are like this. So when I'm applying the force, and I'm making that kind of movement that we see here, um, that's really the kind of natural movement that would happen if I apply a horizontal force. Why? Because, again, you have to, to know about the center of resistance. Every object has a center of resistance. And when we talk about teeth, the center of resistance is located in the root. 
And what is a center of resistance? It's a, a point in an object where if you apply a force directly there, it will create pure translation. Pure translation meaning all the points of the object will move in the same direction at the same time. Now, as you can see here, the teeth are not translating. They, they are in an angulation like this and they're going like this. So we have a rotation, a rotation that we will call a moment. But this is what happened when we apply a force that is not directly in line with the center of resistance. We are creating a moment. A moment is a tendency for a tooth or an object to rotate and it will rotate around the center of resistance and we'll create another point that we call a center of rotation. It, it, this is so exciting. Again, you want to know more? Watch this course. Haha. <laughs> So knowing this, knowing that the, the initial position is perfect for that type of force, we will add attachments. Now, what type of attachment? How would you orient the attachment? Remember, perpendicular to the force. We're applying a force like this. We're going to have an attachment that's going to be vertical. So if we go and we look at the attachments, this is what we're seeing. Now, look at the attachments on the incisors, the upper incisors, there are vertical attachments. This is the first thing that was proposed by a line. Of course, according to the prescription, I did. And I made some changes. I made some changes. I created another treatment plan. And you can see here that the attachments are a little bit different. I just took them and put them more incisal, farther than the center of resistance. Why? Because the moment is force times the distance. It's like creating a lever. I also changed the attachments on the lateral. As you can see, I beveled them. I put them more incisal also, made other changes. But, but what's going to happen with this? Well, if we look at the model here and we just turn it, you see that we have a surface here of the attachment. And this is where the force will be applied on the distal surface of the attachments. It's not on the surface here. It's the distal surface. So what does that mean? It means that the thickness is important because if you have a very big attachment, but there's no thickness there, it's like having nothing on your tooth. So you need thickness. You need a surface where the force will be able to push, make a pressure and move these teeth in the right direction. So what we're expecting is something like this something like this this is what so we see every stage here so how long how long how long Stefan? how long does how long does it take how long does it, how long did it take you how long how he calm down how long how long does it take to treat a case like this well it doesn't depend only on this let's look at the other teeth so if we look occlusally like this let's go back to where we started I mean, look at this. We're moving only the anterior teeth, posterior teeth. The occlusion is good. That's an adult. We decided not to move the posterior teeth. We're in perfect class one occlusion. The patient is comfortable, chewing well, no problem with the joint. When it's not broken, don't fix it. Believe me and my 30 years of experience. And it's not because I didn't try to fix things before that were not broken. It's more of the opposite. Now let's look at the lower arch. Initial lower arch, there's a lot of crowding here. So how are we gonna uh, try to determine and tell the patient how long the treatment will last? Well, one of the things you can do is look at the tooth movement table. If we open the tooth movement table here, TMT, we can look at the numbers here and let's try to find the biggest number. What do we have here? We have a rotation of tooth one, two, that is 24.7 uh, de uh, degrees distally. That's a big number. We have 
Another one here, 242. Now this is the FDI system. So 242 would be for the universal system. Let's wait, wait. It's gonna be, it's gonna be. 26. So 242, 4.2 or 26 is gonna rotate 30 degrees mesian. So this is uh, this one here. So that's my biggest movement. I look at the extrusion, intrusion, which are hard movement to achieve. Vertical movement with clear liners are difficult. Not that you cannot do it, but they are difficult to do. Not saying you can't, just saying you need knowledge. Maybe some education. Guess where you can get it? Comments below. So looking at that tooth, I have 30 degrees of movement. Now, what's the parameters of clear liners? Well, uh, Invisalign parameters, what they say is that every aligner will move or rotate teeth two degrees. If we rely on that, it would mean that it would take me 15 aligners to rotate this Tooth. I'm looking again at the extrusion intrusion. I'm looking at the tipping and the, 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 the torquing. Um, we have some torquing here, the inclination. This is buccolingual movement, uh, 43.7.8 degrees, uh, 33.8 degrees. They say it's about one degree of torque per aligner. So again, the biggest movement is really here. So 30 degrees, two degrees by aligner would be 15 aligners. Now, my way of uh, calculating things, because you know what? If you've done some aligner cases, you know that. Things are not always 100% like what we see in the ClinCheck. And it's just normal. It's not because the ClinCheck is not good. ClinCheck is a representation of how the force will be applied on the teeth. It's not how the teeth will move. I prefer to always give my patients, you know, a little bit more time. Uh, uh, if I think it's gonna take six months, I'm gonna tell them nine months. If I think it's gonna take nine months, I'm gonna tell them a year. If I think it's gonna take a year, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna tell them a year and a half. So in a case like this, I would think for rotation, I calculate about one degree of rotation for every aligner. So it tells me here, for me, it would take probably about 30 aligners to finish that case. Now, how many aligners do we have in this series, in the first series of aligner? If we look at that, we see that we have 20 active aligners and the four you see after are passive aligners. Why passive aligners? Because I have four passive aligners at the end. Long story, you want to know more about it? Go do our courses, MOCA 101, learning program, 32 hours, you will not regret it. And after that, I have three more aligners that are over correction aligners. So really my, my series could finish at 20. So 20 is less than the 30 I was expecting, but, but, but maybe I will need more. So after 20 aligners, what happened? Because that patient already wore these 20 aligners. So let's just check what happened. What happened with these two incisors? Let's roll the drum here. <laughs> Voila, here it is. This is how it is after the 20 aligners that the patient uh, wore. She was good, she wore them well. This is the result we have. Is it finished? Well, let's just take a closer look. Let's look at both sides. I, I mean, looks good. Let's look here. I mean, not bad for 20 aligners, right? Let's look at the occlusal. That's good. Alignment is good. Here, alignment is good. Let's just, let's compare to how it was before. Remember how it was? It was like this. Isn't it nice? Look at the difference before and after. Not bad, 20 aligners. 20 aligners and knowing what to do and how to do it and how to use these attachments. Because doing the same thing without attachment would certainly move the teeth. I just don't know where they would end up. But you know me, I know you, you're a dentist, I'm a dentist. You know me.
I know you, you're a dentist, I'm a dentist, and we are all perfectionists. You thought you were the only one, nine. No, you're not. We're dentists. We're perfectionists. This is why sometimes we get people crazy. So I just found some little things I wanted to fix. Not big things, but, you know, just little things I wanted to fix. So just 10 more aligners to just correct a little bit the overbite, close the little residual spaces, you know, just, just, just finish it perfectly because I want things to be perfect. So remember what I said from the start. I said 30 aligners, 30 aligners. Now we have 20 on the first set. We have 10 more on the second set. Some say these things are arranged. No, not at all. But again, it just gives you an idea. When you look at the rotation, look at the intrusion, look at the extrusion, look at how much torque, look at the biggest movement you're doing on an arch and it will give you an idea of how long the treatment can last. And your patients, they want to know that. You want to know that. So I hope this will help you prepare and plan your cases better, especially when you have some dipping involved. Again, if you want to know more about clear aligners, clear liner treatment, how to treat patient with clear liners, if you want to understand clear liner principles, if you want to master clear liners, go and check our programs. We have the Mocha 101, the Mocha 201, all courses to really help you learn understand, apply, master, use clear liners and have fun with them. And if you liked this video, please give us the thumbs up because then Google knows that people like you like that kind of videos. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Just subscribe and click the little bell. You will be notified every time we have a new video online. My name is Stefan Reinhardt. I'm the director of the education program for the clear Institute where Dennis make the move. That's everything I had for you today. I'll see you in the next video.